Hello there, you scrub lords, and welcome to a quick status update. And I just happened to open my launcher this morning and see this. Uh, for those of you who are not aware, uh, War Thunder is going to be running their sort of annual uh, collectible vehicles marathon thing that they run every winter. Uh, last time, I believe it was for the i301 and for the M8A1 GMC, which I just did a review on, by the way. If you guys haven't checked that out, please go do so. Uh, in any case, uh, this time around, in much like the summer event that we just had in August and late Jan and late July, I'm sorry, uh, we're going to have four new vehicles come in. Now, these are all collectible vehicles, and these are only obtainable by completing certain tasks. And I'm, this video is simply to go over those tasks real quick and give you guys an idea of what you could possibly expect. I'm trying to get my hands on a, uh, a copy of the Type 62, which I'm about to talk about here in a minute, uh, so I can give you guys a sort of is it worth it video, um, but I'm simply waiting on an answer from Gaijin on that one. So in any case, let's get on with it. So like I said, there are four vehicles coming in this package. You can get the LVT ZIS-2, a USA Rank 2 vehicle, the Type 62, the, USA, uh, the USSR Rank 4, the KI-21 High, and the ME262 Sturmwagen. I hope I'm pronouncing that right in Germans. Uh, in any case, so what? So what's to get excited about? Well, it's an L the LVT. I don't know about you guys, but it's it's kind of a novelty. But I'm not particularly excited about that one. It's an it's an LVT. It's an amphibious vehicle with a ZIS-2 57 uh, millimeter uh, Russian anti-tank gun mounted on it. It's basically going to be the LVT and a ZIS-30 combined into one vehicle. So. Should be kind of interesting. I'm actually kind of wondering whether or not it has a fully rotating turret. I imagine it does, but I could be wrong. Um, and this can be obtained by when you complete six stages of the marathon. Uh, the Type 62, however, is going to be the ultimate collectible vehicle for tankers in this event. Uh, and that can only be obtained when you complete ten of these, uh, of these tasks in the marathon. So, essentially what the Type 62 is, it's a Chinese... Uh, sort of cre molding of the light tank and main battle tank concept. So it's a lightweight version of the Type 59 uh, main, main battle tank, which in, in turn is a Chinese uh, license built copy of the T-54. Um, the Type 62, however, has much, much thinner armor, about 35 millimeters on the front of the hull and about 45 millimeters on the front of the turret, so it's not very well armored at all. However, instead of the 100 millimeter D-10T, they have replaced it with an 85 millimeter gun. Now, this is a post-war vehicle, so it's going to most likely be about 6.7, um, is my guess. Uh, and it, it's going to be interesting to see what kind of ammunition types we get for it. I imagine we're probably we're definitely most likely going to get like some sort of APHE round, but I'm wondering if its performance is going to be similar to, for example, the Object 906 that we have just gotten in the game. So the Type 62 is the vehicle that I'm personally most interested in. Uh, the Ki-21, I'm sorry, I don't really know that much about the Ki-21. I imagine it's quite uh, rare vehicles, seeing as we don't really have anything along those lines. Um, so, apparently, the way they're marketing this is sort of a good ground attacker. Um, apparently, it offers great defensive weaponry with no blind zones. That's kind of interesting. A good bomb load maneuverable enough to destroy half the enemy team in one raid. Does that some In any case, so it looks like the Ki-21 is going to be one of those uh, twin-engine ground attackers that we were really, really hoping that the Japanese would start getting. Unfortunately, I can't say I approve of the fact that this is only a collectible aircraft. If they were going, if they really wanted to introduce this and make a meaningful impact uh, in the terms of Japanese ground attack, they should have introduced it as like an early premium, in my opinion. And in any case, the last vehicle or the last aircraft, I should say, I, I play way too much tanks. Uh, the last aircraft we're talking about is obviously the M2 MA262 Sturmwagen. Uh, now, the Sturmvogel, as far as I can tell, is appears to be another modification of the 262 with uh, air rocket boosters. So, and the way, the way they've described this in here, it looks like this one's going to be heavily modifiable. Um, the possibility of being able to arm it with a 50mm cannon instead of the two 30mm, it just actually loses two 30mm cannons. Uh, in order to be able to bring in bombs, which is another uh, modification you can fit to this aircraft. Um, part of the whole idea of turning the uh, 262 into some sort of blitz bomber, which in and of itself is a really bad idea. But in any case, um, 
48 rockets, it might be able to take that as well. It, basically, it's this is this first paragraph is just describing um, the first the first iterations of the 262. Now, I'm not sure whether or not they're planning on adding any of those to the 262A, um, but we'll have to we'll have to see when it comes out. Again, I'm going to try and get my hands on these aircraft to so, and uh, tanks to see if I can get a sort of uh, is it worth it video out, but we'll have to just wait and see. So what do you have to do to get these vehicles? Well, there are five tasks for each day of this event running, and however, you only have to complete three of those five tasks. So let's go over them real quick. Uh, I know you guys can read what's on the screen there, but I'm going to quickly run through it for those of you guys who are just like listening as if this was a podcast. In any case, so the first one, if you're a tanker, destroy 40 player controlled enemy vehicles. So, but you also have a two times multiplier for RB and three times for SB. That's not very difficult to do. Uh, for RB, that's about 20 vehicles, and for SB, that's about 13.3. So I'd say do, get 14 kills in SB. That's really not that difficult to do. Um, gain supporting fire achievement five times in battles. So basically, you have to uh, get an assist while you're in a squad with somebody, and that's not too bad. Uh, and five times in battles, by the way, so that doesn't mean you don't have to get them all in one. You can get them over a period of a few battles, I think. The third thing you have to get is earn 2,017 points or more in five battles. So that's not particularly difficult to do if you're getting uh, a decent amount of kills, like five or six kills a game, um, you're capping points, you're just playing the game. 2,017 points isn't that difficult to get. Um, it's It means that if you have a really, really bad game, it's not going to affect you. However, if you have a pretty decent game, you're still most likely going to get it. And you only have to get it twice in RB and SB, whereas you have to get it five times in Arcade. So it may be much more easier to do it if you're, uh, if you're an RB and an SB player like I am. Uh, the fourth one is 10 wins with a minimal activity of 70%. That's not actually too difficult to do. It just means you got to sit down, you got to play a few battles, um, especially with the... Uh, with the Tiger Spam going on, if you've got the Heavy Tank number 6, the uh, the Japanese and the Germans are winning a lot of games right now in the mid-tier. So that should be actually really, really easy to do. Um, and the th the last one, get three wins in a row with a minimum activity of three of 70%. That can be kind of difficult. Uh, it depends. I mean, if you're getting three wins in a row with a minimum activity of 70%, that means that you are essentially carrying three games in a row. So that could be kind of difficult to do, but again, you only have to get three of these five tasks done. So it's not that big of a deal in comparison. However, if you are a pilot, there are slight differences. So for a pilot, you only have to get 30 vehicle kills. Uh, you only have to get four times the supporting fire achievement. So you only have to get essentially four, uh, four assists when you're in a squad with somebody and your teammate has to kill the guy. Um, you have to earn 2017 or more five times in battles. It's the same thing there. Uh, the 10 wins and three wins, though, you have to have a minimum activity of 60%. So it's going to be a little bit easier in terms of just straight statistics. Uh, now, whether or not that actually transfers over very well, I have no idea. Again, I don't really play aircraft that much anymore, so we'll have to wait and see. Uh, you can complete these stages and tasks only in World War II Chronicles, however. So... This, it, the only way you're going to be able to complete these is by playing in the uh, Chronicles calendar. So the uh, mini events that they've got running in the events tab, that's the only place you're going to be able to complete them. So you're going to have to grind a lot in there. Um, however, if you missed any stages, you can always buy them in the in-game store. So it, let's say you're, you're gone for the weekend, you're out uh, traveling, seeing family for Christmas, and you come back... You can, if you've got a little bit, a bit of Christmas cash in your hands, you can put that into uh, into buying these stages in the in-game store. Now, whether or not that's a good thing, uh, you can, you guys can argue that down in the comments. I'm not for or against it. Um, I think it's kind of nice, actually. Now that I think about it, screw it. I I'm I'm kind of for it. Uh, me being a bit of a wallet warrior, um, I am more than willing to put a little bit of money into buying a couple of uh, stages if I miss them. Uh, also, they say we'd like to remind you that completion of the World War II Chronicles tax, uh, tasks will be counted as tasks for the Ground Forces CBT for Japanese tanks. So, if you complete enough of these tasks, uh, you can get access to the Japanese Ground Forces if you don't have them, for example. Which is really cool. Um, some of the prizes down here. Let's get right into those. I'm going to be the first to say that I'm not particularly excited about getting decals for prizes. I, 
there's almost no use for them to me because normally they're pretty goofy. And on top of that, um, I like the way I like to set up my vehicles. I like to set them up uh, in terms of decals historically accurate for the most part. Um, and occasionally I'll throw on like the CBT um, tester or the uh, or the tanks tester uh, decal on there as well. But these kind of things, they, they don't really interest me all that much. Um, 3D decorations are always kind of cool. Uh, the boosters are kind of are quite useful if you can get a hold of them, especially that 900%. Like, holy shit. Um, random talisman for two to four ground vehicles for uh, or aircraft. Random camouflage, that's kind of cool. Uh, ten times random backup vehicles. Backup vehicles are always useful, especially in RB tanks. Um, whether or not they're actually useful for aircraft, uh, that remains to be debatable. Depends on what mode you play. So, like I said earlier, uh, if you complete six stages, you get the LVT uh, or the KI-21. If you complete ten stages, you get the Type 62 and the ME-262 Sturmvogel. So, and with the uh, with the ability to buy these stages, there's a pretty good possibility that you won't, if you've got enough cash on you, you won't have to pay for any of them, which is really kind of annoying. But at the same time. If you want it that bad, it's, ava it's available to you, especially if you don't have that kind of time on your hands like a lot of us do. Uh, or a lot of us don't, I should say. So, I mean, what are my, what are my overall opinions on this? Um, I like uh, the idea of collectible vehicles. The problem is, is that uh, despite me really, really loving War Thunder, I'm not that much of a competitive person. I'm not the kind of person who's going to sacrifice every bit of their life to just get one vehicle. Now, luckily, I'm in a position where I can ask for these sort of things and get them applied to my account, um, and that's due to the community content partners uh, partnership program that I'm in with Gaijin, which is which has helped me in terms of creating my videos greatly. Um, like, these... That program is the reason why I'm still doing uh, War Thunder videos, even though I, I know I just started doing them a year ago. Regardless, I these videos for the or these uh, vehicles for the average person, if you're not that, unless you are seriously determined to get your hands on them, I can't see them being all that great. They're going to be more of a novelty than anything else, in my opinion. Unless, for example, uh, you're like stuck in tier th tier two or tier three russians and you really want it and you you're trying to play the game for free you're not trying to spend money on it and you got enough time on your hands this could be an opportunity to get your hands on some really really nice high tier vehicles especially for aircraft because if you get your hands on the 262 you've essentially given yourself a free tier five um especially if you grind it out if you buy it then well it's obviously not free so what are my overall opinions on this my overall opinions are essentially this is these events are kind of cool but at the same time um me being not an overly competitive player i'm not totally inclined to sit down and grind out these vehicles especially because these things are in events and you can't get them in random battles um speaking of which i should probably go over those events so They've got a calendar up, and so every single day, they've got different events. Um, it, today, they've got German troops invade the USSR. So if you want to complete any of those tasks that I mentioned earlier, so destroy the 40-player control vehicles or something like that, you have to do them in the World War II Chronicles events. You cannot do them outside of that. That I'm not a fan of. Um, the fact that you have to play one you're restricted to playing like basically one series of events i could easily see that being a an issue where people are just joining the events and playing them only because they want these vehicles and rather rather than actually playing them because they're enjoyable I, and the reason why some of these world war ii chronicles events are not popular is because they're not they're not as fun um i'm not saying that all of these are not fun uh because that's certainly not the case but I feel that there is a better way of doing it. It, in my opinion, just allow them to do this in random battles. Gaijin, it's really not that difficult. And if you're so concerned about people getting their hands on these vehicles, then why are you giving them to us in the first place? Um, I can't imagine that these vehicles are going to be overpowered uh, in any shape or form or anywhere near as initially overpowered as, for example, the KV-220 was when it was, uh, originally introduced. But a lot of that comes down to the whole, uh, new tank syndrome where they, or the new aircraft syndrome where they see something they've never seen before and people freak the fuck out because they're like, oh my God, what do I do? Um, 
and this is happening right now with the Japanese tanks because a lot of people are seeing these new vehicles um, to a lesser extent than most other nations because they aren't as well armored. But especially at the higher tiers, a lot of these, a lot of people are not expecting um, the performances that these vehicles are putting out. So they're doing a lot better initially than they will probably do in the long run. The Tortoise is the same, is a perfect example of that. When that thing came out, it was pretty much overpowered. Uh, but that was because people didn't know how to fight it. And now that people know how to fight it, it's not that big a deal anymore. It also doesn't help that the tortoise just got its uh, its zoom levels nerfed massively into the ground. Which is a real pain in the ass, because I really love that tank. So, in any case, I, I hope you guys have enjoyed this uh, sort of quick announcement video. Um, I know I don't have any gameplay in this, but I just wanted to get this sort of information out to you guys. Because I know a lot of people haven't been talking about it, or a lot of people just haven't really been mentioning it. And I think a lot of people just saw the sort of Worth Under Winter Holiday thing pop up in their uh, in their news category on their launcher. And didn't think twice about it. So, for those of you guys who enjoyed the video, give it a like. If you didn't, well, drop a dislike. dislike I totally understand. In any case, thank you guys for watching. Keep your tracks checked, keep your bonds in place, keep around on the tube, and I'll see you guys in the next video.